Tutorial 5 Logic 2 and Controllers Part 2 Just a short reminder. Statically created instances are sprites that are simply dragged onto the room designer. They have a predetermined position and can be viewed through the game construction process. Dynamically created instances, on the other hand, cannot be seen in the room designer and are created at runtime using the create object action. This flexibility earned by using dynamic sprites comes at the cost of comfort when designing the game. Looking back at our game, we would like to have the enemy created dynamically and in random positions on the screen. We will now introduce a new object type, the controller. So far, we have only dealt with the sprite object type, which has both visual and logical aspects. Controllers, on the other hand, have no visual representation and can only contain logic. This object type often takes the role of a level manager, an object that cannot be seen and manages the flow of the game. Let's add a new controller and call it Level Manager. As you can see, the Canvas and Resources tabs are omitted. This is because controllers have no appearance and are not allowed to make use of them. Going into the Logic tab, we will add a created event. Within the event, let's place a Create Instance action selecting the enemy fish from the drop-down list. This will cause a single enemy fish to be created at the same time that the level manager is created. Let's drag an instance of the new controller into the room and test the game. Notice that dragging the controller places its instance in a list at the bottom of the room designer and the exact location of where the controller was dropped off doesn't make a difference. Running the simulator, you can see we now have two enemy fish in the screen. The first is located at the middle left of the screen and was placed statically at the beginning of the tutorial, and the second one appears in the top left corner. It is important to remember that dynamically created sprites get positioned at the top left corner of the screen by default. Going back to the logic screen, let's modify the position of the newly created enemy sprite. We will do this by using a move to action within the create object action. Notice that instead of dragging the action to the bottom of the actions tree, I'm placing it at the subnode of the create object action. Placing it there makes the action execute in the context of the newly created sprite. This means that the self-target, which appears in the applies to box, refers to the newly created sprite and not to the level manager controller. We will leave the x value unmodified and limit ourselves to the y value. So far, we have limited ourselves to using numeric values in actions. It is now time to introduce the more advanced concepts of expressions. Expressions enable the game designer to perform calculations while the game is running and implement basic algorithms. Most algorithmic operators are supported, so instead of placing a number, one could write a complete expression. The X mark, or check symbol appearing at the right, indicates whether the expression is valid or not. Pressing Control plus Space displays the autocomplete drop-down list. Select RAND. The RAND keyword indicates we would like to receive a random value. The numbers in parentheses specify the range of the allowed numbers, which in our case is between 0 and 800. It is important to stress that a different value will be evaluated each time the expression is evaluated. The upper value 800 was selected because 
It is the height of the screen and will therefore cause RAND to give positions all over the visible area of the screen. Before testing the game, let's remove the statically positioned enemy from the room as it is not actually part of the game. OK, we're ready. As you can see, the enemy fish appears at a different height. Let's restart the room. Notice that there is no need to close the simulator, and the simulator can be restarted using the toolbar at the top. The enemy appears at a different height each time we restart the room. Let's give the game our final touch of the tutorial. Currently, our gameplay is very short. There is only one enemy, and once we pass it, there's nothing to do. We will now make new enemies come at us constantly every three seconds. We will do that using a timer event. Timers are very straightforward and are used to make things happen at a certain delay. Let's add a timer and copy to it the action in the controller's created event. The result is that whenever the timer is triggered, a new enemy fish will be created at a random position on the screen. All that's needed now is an action that will trigger the timer. This is done using the Start Timer action. We will place one in the timer event itself, setting the interval to 3000 milliseconds, or three seconds, and another one at the end of the controller's create event, also set to three seconds. This will generate the following flow in the game. The game begins, and the level manager's create event is triggered. An enemy fish is created at a random position on the screen, and a timer is set for three seconds. At the end of the three seconds, the timer will be triggered, causing another enemy fish to be created, and set the timer interval to another three seconds. This last part will continue indefinitely, constantly creating enemies that the player must avoid. Let's run our final version of the game. Let's save our game as MoFish4. This has been a very lengthy tutorial. In our next tutorial, we will familiarize ourselves with variables and add our first control action. Hope to see you there!